Um, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining this ses our session. Um, I'm amazed that uh, there are many people in our session. So um, today, I'd like to talk about our challenge to provide a simple container as a service on Zip Cluster for our in-house company users. OK, uh, first of all, please let us introduce ourselves. I'm Cyril Kerma, a software engineer uh, working at NTT Communications, the telecom company in Japan. Yeah. Um, I'm Yoshifumi Sumida. Um, I'm also a software engineer uh, working at NTT Communications. OK, um, first, this is the agenda for our presentation. Firstly, we'll talk about our goal, motivation, and uh, requirements. And next, uh, why we provide ZPU resources as containers. And then, we'll compare among several container-related tools. As in the title, we surveyed and uh, evaluated various open source container tools. Finally, we'd like to tell you how we realized our ZPU containers as service. And you'll see a demo how our users use the environment. OK, let's move to the main part. At first, our goal, motivation, and uh, requirements. Our goal is to provide simple containers of service ZP cluster on your house users. The ZP cluster is composed of many uh, no, master nodes and uh, sub nodes like this. The master nodes manage some ZP machines as cluster and uh, schedule ZP container to the sub nodes efficiently. Uh, on the other hand, users can access the PU resources via the master node. In our challenge, we focus on easy management of our resources and the easy deploy for ZP containers of service. Okay, next, our, um, our motivation. We had some ZP servers, but mines them individually that wasn't efficient. So we'd like to manage them as a um, unified resource cluster. Our ZPU cluster should be able to include different NBA ZPU series. This could be a problem of NBA driver version difference. On the other hand, more and more in-house users would like to use ZPU resources for machine learning and their big data analysis, etc. They want to focus on their own tasks. So provision of ZPU resource should be as easy as possible for them. Therefore, we need to provide our ZP cluster as a cloud service. For example, on demand self service and uh, share the ZP resources efficiently. Okay, and uh, to achieve our goal, uh, we have to consider some requirements from both user side and provider side. From user side, why is that users want to deploy and ZP container easily? For example, all they have to do it specifies the number of GPUs they want. They don't care and be a driver version, necessary driver files, and a GPU resource management, right? And um, that is that they want to use Docker because they're familiar with Docker image and Docker Sierra usage. Next, uh, on the other hand, from provider side, like us, they want to assure GPU isolation. Um, a container scheduler should avoid attaching busy ZPUs to new containers. We direct to bind one or more ZPUs to one container uh, and the red its container process can see only its bound ZPUs. We don't consider sharing um, one ZPU among multiple containers because it's difficult to share ZP core and uh, ZP memory efficiently. Our goal is easy deployment for providing GPU cloud service. And uh, providers also want to distinguish containers life cycle according to task types. There are two task types. One is temporary batch task. And the task is executed once, for example, uh, training tasks in machine learning. In this case, how is container life cycle? A container should kill itself soon after the task is completed in a container. The other, uh, on the other hand, uh, next, there is a long-running service task, uh, for example, using Jupyter Notebook. A container process should keep itself alive until users kill it manually. 
it could be more efficient for GPU resource management to utilize these task types. That's because the idle container process uh, couldn't remain in vain. Okay, next I'm talking about why GPU and uh, why we provide GPU resources as containers. And uh, here, I think, I don't have to show you the importance of GPU in detail. Nowadays, GPU is used in many fields or workloads, and uh, some public cloud providers begin to offer GPU instances. Okay, next, let me talk about the uh, reason why we provide GPU resources as containers. First, I'll talk about our first try to provide VM virtual machine based on uh, GPU cloud. We had provided GPU instances on our OpenStack private cloud. We utilized uh, KVM PC parser and attached the GPUs to VMs physically. However, this approach has three problems. The first problem is about uh, NVIDIA driver. Users have to install an appropriate version driver every time creating VMs. The second problem is that we cannot monitor GPU status using NVMe uh, management library, uh, NVML. KVM PC Faster requires you to bind the dummy driver to host machine GPUs. And the third problem is that once users uh, create a specific environment in a VM, it's difficult to run various applications. Okay, uh, could our NB driver version a match uh, may cause application trouble? Okay, now let's move on talk about our solution using container. Container, uh, for example, Docker, can resolve previous problems. Here, we select Docker because of our user's requirements. Okay, next. Uh, actually, how users resolve our problems. As I said, in case of VM instance, users have to install an appropriate MB driver for GPUs every time creating VM. When using Docker, on the other hand, they don't care it. Once the providers install the driver on host machines, all users have to do is create and uh, destroy containers. Users just manage on their life cycle and uh, don't consider and uh, Docker layer. And uh, providers can monitor GPUs using NVML because of not using dummy driver for host machine GPUs. And next, about a master version problem among application, CUDA toolkit, and embed drivers files. Docker image, in this case, can resolve this. Application and the CUDA toolkit can consolidate as the image previously. And the embed driver files can be injected inside containers as a volume. However, uh, in addition to these, um, these we have to care the much between MB driver and the uh, circuit version. Next, I'll show you an efficient solution. Okay, um, NVIDIA Docker um, is a useful tool for GPU usage. Let me talk about NVIDIA Docker. Um, it's a Docker dropper tool to use and iterate GPUs inside the Docker containers. There are ready to use images of CUDA and various deep learning frameworks for NVIDIA Docker. Then, let me show you the internal NVIDIA Docker. It wraps just Docker run and Docker create command, adding Docker serial options, mount nested NVIDIA driver files like this right. And uh, NVIDIA Docker plugin can detect NVIDIA driver files for these options. It can find all NVIDIA libraries and binaries on the host. And I'd like to talk about how NVIDIA Docker solves a master version problem between the image version and the NVIDIA driver. It uses a special label in Docker file like this. For example, if the driver is too old for running the CUDA version, and an error occurs before starting a container like this. Okay, next, I'll show you the comparison result among some CAMDL tools. We surveyed and compared some container related tools and uh, decided how to provide our containers a service on ZP cluster. Actually, we surveyed and verified this, um, this third function. And uh, this is the point of view of our comparison. I'd like to pick up some points and uh, talk about these. First, 
specify the number of GPUs. This means that users can specify the number of GPUs and allocate multiple GPUs, not only single, to containers by themselves. Next, uh, GPU isolation. This means that let each container process the only its own GPUs. And uh, the GPUs which is already used by uh, the containers will not be attached to new containers. Finally, exec batch tasks. Uh, this means that a uh, container process can be killed automatically when a user task in a container are successfully terminated. Then, okay, let's go to its evaluation actually. At first, in via Docker. And uh, firstly, how to specify the number of GPUs. You could use environment variable and base GPU uh, like this, okay. And uh, next, GPU isolation. For example, I specify GPU IDs like this slide uh, using a base GPU and uh, create a container and uh, check GPUs both in the host and the container. In the host, we can see all four um, GPUs on the machine. On the other hand, in a container, we can only see the specified GPUs, ID 0 and 1. So, NVIDIA Docker could isolate the specified GPUs in a container. Okay, next. Uh, but, however, uh, when I created two containers without GPU IDs, both containers got the same GPUs. It's not fine because users may create containers attached with busy GPUs. As a result, GPU isolation for NVIDIA Docker is not enough for our requirements. Okay, next. Uh, let's move to Docker Swarm Swarm mode. And the Docker itself didn't have the function to manage cluster. So our next approach was to survey Docker native clustering tool. Docker Swarm is a native clustering tool for Docker, and uh, Docker 1.12 got built in orchestration future Swarm no mode. However, now, Docker itself cannot manage GPU resources like CPU or memory. And uh, also, it hasn't been supported by NVIDIA Docker. So, it cannot inject necessary NVIDIA driver files into containers automatically in ZP cluster. To conclude, it doesn't satisfy the requirements management of ZP cluster. Okay, next. As we can see, uh, only NVIDIA Docker or uh, Docker related clustering tools couldn't satisfy our requirements. And uh, as I told you before, at first, we provide ZP Cloud OpenStack. In this context, we try, the use, uh, try to use container-related OpenStack component. For example, uh, Magnum. Magnum is just a way to deploy a container orchestration engine, COE, on OpenStack. On the other hand, uh, OpenStack is a container management service, and uh, it's a relatively new OpenStack project. So uh, we selected them so, and uh, verified whether it can satisfy our requirements. However, now GPU resource is not supported. It's a fatal problem for our requirements. As a result, it doesn't satisfy our requirements. Okay. Okay, next, let's talk about Apache methods. So far, we have Docker, Docker related tools, and OpenStack them from here. We'd like to show our survey and evaluation of major theories, Apache Mesos and Kubernetes. First, Apache Mesos. It's a cluster manager and uh, provides efficient resource isolation and uh, sharing. It has a master and seven nodes, and uh, you can control its master by various Mesos frameworks. Okay, next. Let's see Mesos DP support status. Mesos version uh, 1.0 at uh, NVR GPU support. It got a uh, function to manage GPU resources, same as CPU, memory, and disk. However, NVR GPU support in Mesos is only available for Mesos containers, not, dot, dot, uh, not Docker container. And uh, I'd like to talk about Mesos framework GPU support. So Mesos c has GPU support uh, on the previous slide, but Mesos frameworks also must have GPU support. However, now the frameworks support both GPU and Docker for now. 
Okay, next, let me show how to specify the number of GPUs and the GPU isolation for methods. We use the methods and the marathon version like this. When you specify the number of GPUs, you find numbers in JSON code and uh, like this. And I actually recreated the containers from this file and uh, could say isolate the GPUs in container and the GPU isolation. Uh, in every Docker, it has a problem that same GPUs were attached uh, in different containers. On the other hand, in Mesos, it's able to divide different GPUs into different, uh, different containers like this figure. So Mesos can assure GPU isolation. Okay, next, Mesos local support. Before I said, now NVIDIA GPU support is only available for the Mesos containers only, not a Docker container. Mesos containers support Docker image, however, cannot use Docker API, Docker CLI. It's a regrettable point for our requirements. Our users want to use Docker API because they are familiar with it. Okay, finally, let me show Mesos related status. Mesos may support Docker containerizer with GPU. In next version 1.2, as we can see, the, uh, this is GitHub commit logs. However, Docker support with GPU in Mesos frameworks like Marathon seems not to progress. Okay. And now let's move to Kubernetes. And Kubernetes is one of the major container orchestration engine from Google. And Kubernetes has various features for orchestrating, orchestrating container. Uh, for example, in cluster management, uh, auto scaling, auto hearing, um, storage orchestration, and batch execution. And Kubernetes has some original concept of container management. It manages, con it manages container as a group of one or more containers. And this concept is called pod. And pod shares its storage and the option the, about how to run containers. Uh, when creating containers, uh, you, have, you have two ways to deploy containers. And simple deploy a pod or controller. And firstly, uh, let me talk about using pod. And pod is the most simple deployment method in Kubernetes. As I said before, um, the pod is the minimal unit for uh, managing containers. And deploying a pod simply creates a group of one or more containers. On the other hand, uh, controllers can define how to create and manage pod with additional function. And there are various kind of uh, uh, controllers. For example, job, uh, replica set, and deployment, and so on. And in this talk, I'll touch on job controller uh, later. And next, uh, let me show how to manage container lifecycle. When user creates containers, uh, they generally prepare a manifest file in YAML or JSON format. In a manifest file, user defines the spe specification of a container. For example, a pod's kind, a container's name, an image name, and so on. And Users can create or delete containers from a uh, command line interface or uh, web UI and to submit Kubernetes master node um, through REST API or web UI. And now let me talk about uh, whether Kubernetes GPU support satisfies our requirements. Um, before uh, version 1.6, um, Kubernetes was not mature enough. Um, but um, version 1.6 and over supports GP scheduling well, and uh, it satisfies uh, our requirements. In other words, and Kubernetes can assign multiple GPUs to one container, and uh, each container can occupy its own GPUs. And so next, I will show you the result using the, this version. And to specify the number of GPUs, uh, define the number in the manifest file, like this. 
And here it creates one container and uh, we can see I traded two GPUs inside the container. Uh, what about GPU isolation? And in NVIDIA Docker, the same GPUs are attached to two different containers. And, but in Kubernetes, uh, it can distribute different uh, GPUs to different containers properly like this. And next, how about the batch task? And the batch task runs once. Uh, when the task is completed successfully, and the container is automatically terminated. And in Kubernetes, uh, we can use job controller to realize batch task and just define the kind to job in the manifest file. Uh, like a pod, uh, we have isolated uh, GPUs in the containers. A user can check the status of task to see whether it's completed. Uh, we can see that the uh, container is terminated automatically. <coughs> and, okay, we have seen the result of uh, these five tools, and I summarized them into, into this table. And you can find the Kubernetes is better choice in many points of view. And in this result, uh, Mesos is comparable to Kubernetes. And because the methods also provide GPU isolation and to specify the number of GPUs and so on. And but Kubernetes is superior to methods in some of Docker support. In the last part of this talk, um, I will talk about our addition on how to realize our GPU container at the service. And based on the results of the comparison, what we choose is Kubernetes. At the point when we submitted the call for paper, um, Mesos had advantages to the other tools to satisfy our requirements. And this is to say that Mesos doesn't support Docker, and, but its GPU isolation is better than uh, other tools. However, the recently released Kubernetes version 1.6 had both and Docker support and a pretty good GPU isolation. And so it made us to change our mind. So this figure shows uh, the architecture of our environment briefly. And our our Kubernetes cluster have five nodes, and now including one master and four, four GPU slave nodes. And users control the cluster from and uh, users local machine or log into the master node. And we also provide an FS server as external storage for users. <coughs> and based on the result, uh, based on the experience of GPU cluster deployment. Uh, let me share some tips for providers. Um, at the beginning, uh, I talk about how to enable GPU container. Uh, we need to do three things on each slave node. Um, firstly, install NVIDIA driver. Uh, secondary, install NVIDIA Docker. At last, uh, when running Kubernetes, add a certain parameter to it. And next, I will explain about the first one and the second one in details. And firstly, uh, install NVIDIA driver on each slave node. And in NVIDIA driver includes and various driver, uh, various sorry, various libraries and kernel module. And in particular, include driver library and uh, NVIDIA driver library are needed in the container containers, and so they will be injected into containers later. Um, please note that uh, do not install CUDA toolkit uh, on the slave node, and because it will be included inside the offshore Docker image by NVIDIA, and this is to avoid version dependency problems. <coughs> and secondary, install NVIDIA Docker on its node. 
And to enable container to use GPU, um, provider needs to pick up the necessary driver files and uh, inject them into container. And bot providers have to, have to know which are the necessary driver files and uh, where are them. And because uh, these files exist in many directories, and, and, be a dollar, and be a Docker help us to do this easier. So, and, and be a Docker plugin can detect the necessary files to be injected and uh, aggregate these files under one specific directories, like this. In this slide, we can, uh, we, we call this directory NVIDIA Docker volume. After that, um, just by mounting NVIDIA Docker volume into a container. And um, user can utilize GPU inside the container. And please note that uh, NVIDIA Docker itself can automatically detect NVIDIA Docker volume and uh, mount it into a container. However, uh, when using NVIDIA Docker volume on Kubernetes, a user needs to specify the path of NVIDIA Docker volume explicitly in the manifest file. And the NVIDIA Docker is nice, uh, but there is still one version problem. Um, because the path of NVIDIA Docker volume includes NVIDIA driver version number, like this, and two nodes have uh, different paths. In particular, and this will be a problem when your cluster includes multiple kind of GPUs. One solution is to unify the path name by creating symbolic ring on each shape node. Then you can use the same path for embedded Docker volume in the manifest file. After the deployed the GPU cluster, and there are several additional tasks for providers. And sometimes a user wants to select a specific GPU. Uh, for example, uh, when user wants to do heavy workload like uh, machine learning or um, artificial intelligence, um, and they, they may want to use uh, a Tesla P100 GPU. And this is a high performance GPU. And provider attach label like GPU type to each thread node according to GPU series. And then user can enable the label in their manifest file. And beside the task about initial deployment, uh, provider have to do monitoring uh, during the daily operation. Uh, monitoring is needed uh, because if uh, GPU are here remaining, uh, and provider needs to add GPU resources. And or advise users to re release unnecessary GPU resources by terminating or deleting pod. Uh, we had look on two methods for monitoring. Uh, first, and uh, Kubernetes itself provides GPU resource monitoring on each node. And by running kubectl describe node, and um, provider can see a number of GPUs each node. And, but this function doesn't work well currently. A second, uh, provider can monitor GPU resource on its trade node by NVML. Um, NVML gets some metrics about GPU. Uh, for example, um, GPU utilization rate and used GPU memory rate and so on. And therefore, our choice is limited to NVML to monitor GPU utilization rate only for now. I showed some chips for providers. And next, um, let me talk from the user's side. Uh, we assume that users have two ways to execute the task. And this is the... Uh, uh, there are the service task and the batch task, as mentioned in our requirements. So next demonstration, I will show you each steps of the workflows. So, 
So and now uh, let's move to our demonstration. Um, I show you our demo movie, and during this movie, and um, I talk about how users use our Kubernetes cluster. Let's start the movie. And this is a figure of our environment. And one master node, a post node. And at first, I log into the master node. Um, as you can see, Kubernetes says one master and a post thread node. Next, I log into one thread node has two GPUs. And you can see two Tesla Cat and GPUs in this node. And next, I'll show you how users use our environment. And there are two kind of users task, service and batch task. First, let me show you, uh, let me show you batch task. Once the batch task is finished, the container will be terminated. And to run batch task, user create manifest file uh, like this. For example, uh, I define a kind to job. I want to and uh, two GPUs, Tesla P100, and uh, do some training command using MNIST and inside TensorFlow containers, a uh, container. Sorry. And next, uh, I create TensorFlow job. As you can see, job is created. And next, I confirm my requested uh, two P100 are assigned property. After a while, I check my job status to see it's completed. And so now um, I can check the training results. Uh, you can see bot task results in this way. And the other type of user task is service task. It's long running and uh, keeps container alive. <coughs> And similar to batch task, user creates a manifest like this. I set kind to replication control for managing pod. A container port bound to host port. I want one P100 GPUs with the digit container image. You can also use Kubernetes Web UI to create container and just upload the manifest file and you can see the digits pod is created. Now I can access to digits UI on my browser. And here I register MNIST dataset. The dataset is being examined. So the training process uh, using the coffee will begin. Then you can see the real time running state and GPU status. The demonstration and here, thank you.